precisely 1.15. This is the news on Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. News is edited by Danushka Madhavela, read by Sabrina Zawahir. The headlines. A series of meetings has been organized to educate the people regarding the development programs of the government. Arrangements have been made to provide title deeds to 8,000 residents of the apartments owned by the UDA next month. MOP provided free for paddy cultivation for next two maha seasons. Agriculture Minister to submit cabinet paper to reduce coconut oil prices. The inflation in Colombo urban area increased in June. The Foreign Minister says that Sri Lanka benefits from a debt repayment sustainability plan gaining an advantage of 17 billion US dollars. The Kandy Esela Perahara festival will commence on the 5th of August. The annual July festival of Madhu Shrine will be held on the 2nd of July. And in world news, Hardliner takes narrow lead in Iranian election. And in sports, Unbeaten India and South Africa will compete in the T20 World Cup final today in Bridgetown. Now the local news in detail. A series of meetings has been organized to educate the people regarding the development programs of the government. The first meeting in this regard will be held at 2.30 p.m. tomorrow at Mathara Fort Stadium under the patronage of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Meanwhile, the second meeting, organized by the alliance led by the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, will be held at Vallavaya town this evening. State Minister Jagat Pushpakubara organizes the events. This alliance is a combination of more than 70 independent MPs of the parliament. The first meeting of this alliance will be held at Ambalangoda recently. Urban Development and Housing Minister Prasanna Ranatunga says that arrangements have been made to provide title deeds to 8,000 residents of the apartments owned by the Urban Development Authority next month. This will be held under the government's program to provide title deeds to dwellers in such apartments in Colombo. In addition, the National Housing Development Authority has also planned to give 1,070 title deeds to dwellers living in apartments in Colombo. The minister said that this program will be implemented according to the pledge given by the President Ranil Vikramasinghe in the last budget that 50,000 Colombo flat owners will be given their title deeds. According to the UDA, 14,559 units of the 22 housing complexes have been given to low-income people. Transferring of ownerships of these houses to dwellers has been delayed due to the problematic situation arising from certain related rules and regulations. The minister emphasized that he has already discussed with the Attorney General and obtained the necessary advice in this regard. Minister Ranathunga further stated that all Colombo flat owners will be given their title deeds before the end of this year. Minister of Agriculture and Plantation Industries Mahinda Maravira announced that a national week for the implementation of the Youth Agri-Entrepreneurship Village Program will be held from July 1st to 7th. He also stated that the government has decided to provide free MOP fertilizer for paddy cultivation to farmers for the next two seasons. Minister Maravira made these remarks during a press briefing themed Collective Path to a Stable Country held at the Presidential Media Centre recently. He further said that measures are being taken to address the rise in the price of coconut oil in the market. He revealed the government charges 150 rupees per litre of imported coconut oil at present and he would propose a reduction of this amount via cabinet paper. Citing data from the Coconut Development Authority, he said the annual coconut oil requirement is 25,868 tons. There are 51,457 tons of coconut oil available within the country, he said, asserting that the price hike was unwarranted. However, 
Minister Amaravira acknowledged that the increase in fertilizer prices has impacted crops. This news is brought to you by Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Continuing local news. According to the Department of Census and Statistics, the inflammation in Colombo urban area increased to 1.7% in June from 0.9% in May. Citing calculations by the Colombo Consumer Price Index, the department said food inflation increased to 1.4% in June from 0% in May, while inflation in the non-food category increased from 1.3% to 1.8% during the period. Sri Lanka's inflation at the national level decreased to 1.6% in May from 2.7% in April, according to the National Consumer Price Index. Inflation was at 69.8% in September 2022 when the country experienced an economic crisis. Minister of Foreign Affairs and President's Council Ali Sabri stated that the successful debt sustainability process with bilateral creditors will provide Sri Lanka with an advantage of approximately 17 billion US dollars. The minister also stated that this situation will facilitate successful negotiations regarding international sovereign debts. Minister of Foreign Affairs Ali Sabri revealed this addressing the media briefing yesterday at the Presidential Media Center under the theme Collective Path to a Stable Country. The annual July festival of Madhu Shrine will be held on the 2nd of July. The Bishop of Manar, Most Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Fernando, said that the preliminary preparations for the festival are underway. The annual July festival of Madhu started with a flag hoisting on the 23rd of this month. Today is the seventh day of the festival. The Holy Rosary will be held on Monday evening, followed by a special Eucharistic adoration service and blessing. The festival mass will be celebrated as a joint liturgy at 6.15 a.m. on the 2nd of July. Archbishop Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit will preside over the festival mass. Bishop of Manar, Most Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Fernando, also said that after the Requiem Mass, there will be a procession of our Mother of Madhu and the devotees will be given special blessings of Mother. That ends local news. The main news story is brought to you by Siddha Lepa Vedamahatma. The Candy Asala Perahara Festival will commence on the 5th of August with the auspicious cup planting ceremony at the four main Devales, Diyavadana Nilame of the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic, Pradeepa Nilagadela, announced. The cup planting ceremony, marking the beginning of the festival, will take place facing the northwest direction at 4.10 a.m. on August 5th at the Natha, Vishnu, Kataragama and Patini Devales, according to the Diyavadana Nilame. That came to you in Main News. The Main News story was brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. Moving on to Watchlight. The National Water Supply and Drainage Board stated that a 15-hour water cut imposed to several areas until 12 midnight tonight. Accordingly, water supply to Dehivala, Mount Lavinia, Sri Jayawadhanapura Kote, Kaduela Municipal Council Area, Maharagama, Burlas Gamoa, Kolunnava Urban Council Area and the Kotikavatta Mulleriyava Pradeshya Sabha Area will be affected. Meanwhile, water supply for the Murotua Municipal Council area will be under low pressure conditions. That came to you in Watchlight. Coming up, World News. Taking a look at the headlines of the World News, Hardliner takes narrow lead in Iranian election. Singapore charges activists over pro-Palestinian letters. Reports say that North Korea cracking down on wedding dresses and slang. Now the world news in detail. Hardliner candidate Said Jalil has taken a narrow lead in Iranian presidential election according to early results announced by the government. The former 
nuclear negotiator was leading with nearly 42% of the vote after more than 8 million ballots had been counted. Current predictions are that the election will go to a second round which is set for next Friday. Two security force members were killed after unidentified gunmen attacked a vehicle carrying election boxes in Sistan, Baljistan province, according to state media reports. Three activists in Singapore have been charged over rallying people to deliver letters to the Prime Minister, urging him to end ties with Israel. Singapore strictly regulates protests and public demonstrations, advocating causes of other countries are not allowed. The war in Gaza has been a particularly sensitive issue for the tiny country that has a significant Muslim population and also maintains a close relationship with Israel. Authorities have urged Singaporeans not to stage protests on the issue and instead participate in dialogues and donation drives. North Korea is carrying out a widespread crackdown on everything from wedding dresses to slang as it seeks to counter the South South's uh, influence, a new report has revealed. The report, released by South Korea's Unification Ministry, is based on the testimony of hundreds of defectors. It includes the case of a 22-year-old who was executed after admitting, listening to South Korean music and distributing films, first reported by the BBC last year. North Korea described last year's report as slander and fabrication, but has yet to respond to the new document. That ends World News prior to concluding the headlines of the World News once again. Hardliner takes narrow lead in Iranian election. Singapore charges activists over pro-Palestinian letters. Report says that North Korea cracking down on wedding dresses and slang. That ends World News. Development News the Japanese government has decided to start the development projects which have been suspended due to the progress made by Sri Lanka in the implementation of economic reforms. Japanese envoy in Colombo, Mizikoshi Hideaki, says steps will be taken to resume Japanese projects in Sri Lanka, which has been halted after signing the relevant MOUs with regard to debt restructuring. Speaking at a press conference in Colombo, the ambassador said, and he expressed happiness over the signing of debt restructuring agreements with bilateral creditors. He said that Japan will continue to support Sri Lanka. That came to In Development News. Moving on with sports news. Two unbeaten teams, India and South Africa, will compete in the T20 World Cup final today in Bridgetown, starting at 8 p.m. Sri Lanka time. Both teams have maintained strong records with India, led by Rohit Sharma reaching the final with convincing performances, showcasing their all-round capabilities. South Africa under Aidan Makram bounced back strongly after the league stage boasting a powerful bowling department to challenge India's strong batting lineup. Captain Aidan Makram aims to achieve a unique double, having led the ICC Under-19 World Cup winning team in 2014 and now eyeing the T20 World Cup in their maiden final appearance. If India win the T20 World Cup final on Saturday, it will secure their first world title for 13 years, a way too long for the sport's overwhelming superpower. Were South Africa to win, it would be their first World Cup triumph in their long cricketing history. That was Sports News. Go the all-new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am, a plan for your dream. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Navaloka Hospitals PLC has announced that they have successfully completed 500 kidney transplant surgeries. 
Kidney transplant surgeries are often referred to as the process of transplanting a healthy kidney from a living or deceased donor into a patient whose kidneys no longer function properly. Chairman of the Navaloka Hospitals, Dr. Jayanta Dharmadasa, said that the Navaloka Hospitals PLC are honoured and humbled at the time in achieving new milestone in healthcare. That came to you in Business News. Business News. Sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekatiana youth ekat life ke change ekat niya meta set na. Aswa agi na dekh pugi na hai karna. Youth ekat niya meta set na friendship meta na. The all new NSB itro mitro account NSB I am a plan for your dream. Moving on to economic news. The Committee on Parliamentary Business has decided to debate the resolution for the implementation of external debt restructuring agreements on the 2nd and 3rd of July. Accordingly, the Parliament is scheduled to meet on Tuesday, the 2nd of July at 9.30 a.m. and it has been decided to hold the debate until 5 p.m. The President is also scheduled to make a special statement to Parliament on that day regarding the implementation of external debt restructuring agreements. That came to you in economic news. Weather report. Finally, we take a look at the weather report. Several spells of light showers will occur in western Sabragamua and northwestern provinces and in Kandy, Nuarelia, Gaul and Mathura districts. Showers or thunder showers may occur at a few places in Uva province and in Ampara and Batikolo districts in the evening or at night. Strong winds of about 40 to 50 kilometers per hour can be expected at times over the western slopes of the central hills, northern, north central and northwestern provinces and in Trincomalee, Hambantota and Munaragala districts. That was the weather report prior to concluding this bulletin of news, the headlines once again. A series of meetings has been organized to educate the people regarding the development programs of the government. Arrangements have been made to provide title deeds to 8,000 residents of the apartments owned by the UDA next month. MOP provided free for paddy cultivation for next two Maha seasons. Agriculture Minister to submit cabinet paper to reduce coconut oil prices. The inflation in Colombo urban area increased in June. The foreign minister says that Sri Lanka benefits from a debt repayment sustainability plan gaining an advantage of 17 billion US dollars. The Kandy Asala Perihara festival will commence on the 5th of August. The annual July festival of Madhu Shrine will be held on the 2nd of July. With that, we conclude the news and over to my friend and certainly yours, who's all geared up to keep you entertained with a wonderful collection of music. Over to you, Victor.